Hello everyone, welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Arwen Herman. How do you find the best kosher restaurants? We have the opportunity to speak to the restaurant guy, Elon Kornblum, about his new app in the kosher restaurant industry. Let's take a kosher look. Kosher restaurants are, are unique, and uh, a lot of people are trying to find uh, the best of uh, kosherness in their neighborhoods. And with technology, you're able to facilitate um, really from ordering to uh, the restaurants around you. Talk a little bit about uh, why you, de you developed an app uh, you know, for your great kosher restaurants. All right, so I started this about 10 years ago in terms of the magazine. Um, thank God people still love it. You know, people still read it, especially the Jewish crowd on Shabbos. And they, you know, they want to look at it. They want to hold a magazine. But there's no question, obviously, we all know the Internet, social media, um, phones are really what the future is. Um, people are always, you know, having their phones in their pockets. And basically, they're looking, you know, for the, the restaurant, whether it's a phone number, an address, a little bit more. So, obviously, it was a progression. And, you know, there are several apps out there in every industry. Um, so, what we've kind of taken is our popular website, which is greatkosherrestaurants.com. Also, it's been around for 10 years. It's, it gets about a million hits a year between, you know, the regular version and the, and the mobile site, um, but we've been, you know, we've been asked, obviously, by, you know, hundreds of people, when are you coming out with an app? When is, you know, the app coming? Um, so it really was, obviously, demand. Um, you know, there are some other apps out there, uh, but we, what we did with the magazine and the website and with the app is something different from what everyone else has been doing, is where it's not just a name, address, phone number, that's all you get. With us, um, we have pictures and menus and links and uh, make reservations and ask the restaurant guy and contact the restaurant. And um, There's so many different features that we have with the app um, that kind of comes along with the website. We've now just moved it into the app, and there's going to be so many different things that we're going to be building on the app. Because we understand that you know people have that convenience of having the phone with them all the time, they can do a search by location and by you know cuisine and and all that. So we certainly have uh, we have all the restaurants um, around the country. So one one of the great things that um, I liked about the app is uh, you know you mentioned the pictures. Right. You know, a lot of people when they're when they're making that decision of should I go you know meat or dairy, like what's the ambiance? Like you get that sense of like you know it's not like a, a dungeon or maybe if you're looking for a quick bite. Um, that that says like I'm in, I'm in and I'm out. Um, it, it's a really important part of uh, the sort of the decision process for a lot of people. No question. We always say you know we kind of uh, have a, a peek into the window of the restaurant. Where I know not everyone can go to the restaurant and, and see what it looks like. A lot of these restaurants are um, <clears throat> are in the background where it's not on the street and you can't drive by and kind of look and see what it looks like. So with the pictures, that's what makes us special. That's what makes us unique. Uh, it's the pictures. It's the you know taking the restaurant and then magnifying it in terms of you know letting people know exactly what they can expect. Whether it's you know the specialties, whether um, you know the little bit about the background, about the chef and the owner. So you know what we have with with the app is we have over 1,500 restaurants um, that we have listings for. But obviously with with our featured listings is what that's what our magazine is about. This is what our website is about. Is we take about 200, 250 of the top kosher restaurants, and we really magnify it in terms of giving them all the information that anyone can can need, with obviously hours and supervision. But you know, really get into full menus, and they can make a reservation, and they have links to to their Facebook page, and uh, really dive into the, the crux of what every restaurant. Um, is all about and what you can expect. So that's what kind of makes us different. Is it's not just a name, address, and listing. One of the things that you have is you know ask the restaurant guy. Right. Um, and the first thing is, how did you come? Up, obviously, you've been doing this for a number of years. You're the restaurant guy. You you right. judged uh, cholens and cook-offs and all the different stuff. Contest. You to be a restaurant guy. So that kind of just grew into it. Um, when I first started this, you know, 10 years ago, and in the first couple of years, I didn't, you know, do anything in terms of, you know, coining the phrase restaurant guy, but 
People kept saying to me, oh, you're the restaurant guy. Oh, yeah, you're the restaurant guy. You do the magazine, right? You're the restaurant guy. And then just stuck. And I'm like, you know, this is, this is kind of cute. It's a nice moniker that, you know, I would like to be known as. Um, I think hopefully I've earned the fact that, you know, I, I've been doing this for, for a decade and I've gone to about 500 kosher restaurants. You know, I've pretty much almost eaten at, at most of them. And, you know, people always say, how are you not 400 pounds? And, well, thank God I'm not <laughs> not near that at all. Um, I could probably go to the gym a few more times, but certainly and I try to, you know, uh, pace myself. But certainly, um, you know, I, I kind of are a liaison between the restaurant owner and the customer. I kind of have both perspectives. So I try to know that dual duality of, you know, kind of speaking to the restaurants on a daily basis, speaking to customers on a daily basis, kind of get the pulse of the restaurant industry, and kind of, you know, you know, make suggestions, give recommendations, but also, you know, any problems that any customer has with the restaurant, they know that they can email me, I'll send it to the owner, it'll get resolved. Um, don't go on Yelp and start blasting the restaurant without... Um, it's actually um, funny that you mentioned Yelp, is that a lot of kosher restaurants are terrified yeah. of Yelp because, um, you know, it, it basically becomes this, uh, this opportunity for people to leave negative feedback, which, bottom line, affects the, the restaurant. Um, and uh, owners and managers are very conscious of this and trying to figure out ways to incentivize people not to do uh, negative comments, even work, work through processes. Um, what have you seen, I guess, in, in the market in terms of uh, how uh, managers and owners are you know, relating to this new age, especially with, with your app? Yeah, again, so communication is the key. Like I said, you know, if you it's very one-sided. If you're going to go on Yelp and you're going to bash the restaurant for the one time that you went, you don't know what the problem was. You don't know if the waiter, God forbid, had a, you know had a tragedy or the you know the restaurant was backed up and something was that was you know just makes sense. Obviously, you know you want to go to the manager right there um, and tell them the problem because once you leave the restaurant. There's really not much they can do. You know, maybe they'll invite you back, but if if you're at the restaurant and you say, you know, this was cold or this wasn't cooked right or I'm waiting a long time, they can do something. They can make it, you know, they can bring it back to the kitchen. They can give you uh, something like an appetizer or a drink on the house while you're waiting. They can speed it up a little bit. So, you know, that's what you can do, um, and that's really what you know the the owners are are hoping from the restaurant. That's what we're trying to let people know about is, you know, speak up when you're there. Don't, you know, don't do it when you're two hours, you know, after the restaurant. Um, so management is, is important. The training of the of the waiters is, is huge. I think more restaurants should do that. Um, and I think that just, um, you know, just being up front and, and communicate and, and just, you know, being a mensch. Sure. You know, when uh, you're at a restaurant, you know, these people are working hard. Um, usually they're working just on tips, so um, you know, just be patient. And uh, if there's a problem, just say something, and that's the best thing. So you you, you go around the country working with uh, owners and managers of restaurants. Um, what has surprised you? I mean, there's openings and closings. It seems like every other month. Absolutely, it's every week. I, every, every week. I send out a newsletter, and I'm I'm amazed how many openings there are every week. Yeah, so one of the things that um, I, I guess is the challenge for, for restaurants is, is keeping, obviously, revenue. Um, there's different ways now. You know, even using your mobile app, it's not like a, a definite thing, like, oh, we're going to get customers. Um, what's, what have you found, something, like, really interesting, you know, over the last, you know, two, three months in the restaurant industry, the kosher restaurant industry? Um, you know, there are definitely trends. You know, maybe they're fads. Maybe they're here to stay. Obviously, um, sushi, it's been around for years now. It's been around for thousands of years, but in the kosher market, it's been around maybe, you know, 10 years when it started. And obviously, five years ago, we were really ballooned. Um, and now it's here to stay. But um, I, I see barbecue restaurants opening up a lot now in Miami, in um, in. Crown Heights, there's a barbecue restaurant, a smokehouse. So that's kind of, you know, kind of happening now. Um, burgers, gourmet burgers are, are big now. I feel like on Upper West Side, there's like a burger invasion. Uh, I've never seen uh, 
so many burger places. Oh, everyone's on the Van Wagon, uh, Amsterdam Burger, Gotham Burger, Prime Burger. Um, so you have that's you know people want to kind of take burgers that you know, everyone can make, but trying to dress it up and and uh, with different toppings and make it cool and and unique. What so about, what about like a dairy restaurants, especially on the Upper West Side, where a a a, real, a, a kosher um, pizza star just can't survive. Uh, why, why do you think that is? It's really, I don't know. It's, that's really weird. That's because Upper West Side, you have, you know, you have the yuppies, you have people working, and you have people who, who just want to grab a bite. There are not so many families as opposed to in, in Brooklyn. And I, I am surprised about that. I'm surprised why pizza stores, bagel stores aren't really making it in Upper West Side. Maybe they just, they want to, uh, when they go out to eat, they want to, the burger, they want the steak, and you have uh, Talia's, and you have Prime Co., and, you know, and you have a bunch of different restaurants. So, um, yeah, there's some things that just, whether it just doesn't make sense, but it's, you know, you follow the leader. If burgers are big, you keep on doing burgers. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. There's ups and downs. There's peaks and valleys, and we'll see what happens um, when, uh, you know, with what happens in the next few years. So I have a big question for the the restaurant guy. Okay. I, mean, you know, I myself, uh, I I I'm known for my cooking delicious meatballs, right? And uh, over the last two years, uh, there's been an emergence of a, not a, meat, a meatball shop that I think has four locations. One just opened up on the Upper West Side. Do you think there's a market for a kosher meatballs store? Um, it could be. I think that you need to probably do a little bit more, you know, than just meatballs. Although, because again, uh, burgers you can do so many different. I, I'm sure you know you probably you can do more with meatballs as well. But but I don't know if it's just meatballs. I know I I don't know if you saw there was like a a restaurant uh, show on the Food Network. Um, spicy meat. You know, I don't know if you were you watching that show where they had like a startup yeah. and this guy had like. Uh, spicy meatballs or meat, you know. There's so much you can do. There's not yeah. just one. There's the different yeah. types of meat. There's turkey and this and that. But, it, you know, when I started this, actually the, the opening on the Upper West Side, I was like, this might be the time. And, you know, just in, and that's why I'm asking the restaurant guys. It could be. It could be. Um, I, I'm looking for more ethnic restaurants, actually. I'm looking for more, you know, I know um, Charlotte Bombay, which I know you're a huge fan Unfortunately, closed in Manhattan. They have one in Teaneck, but I'm looking also for some ethnic. Like, how cool would be some Korean kosher restaurant? Or you have Thai restaurants, but more like that, more Vietnamese. Um, it's tough. I know it's it's going out of the box, but I want to see more of those kind of restaurants with different ingredients, nothing we've ever seen before. Um, but certainly, spaghetti and meatballs is is American, is an Italian, but as American as can be. So I would go for that. I like uh, meatballs as much as the next guy. Going back to your app, um, it's available on Android and Apple. Um, yeah, just, we and just got the BlackBerry also. You can get it. So we'll have a, a QR code and on, you know, on Amazon. You can probably get it, but on BlackBerry as well. But certainly Android and iPhone, it's, it's really readily available. And so one of the features on the, uh, on the app is that you can actually reserve a table. Um, how how fast is that process? It just basically you make a reservation. It gets emailed to the owner within seconds. Um, usually it's a receptionist or someone that gets the email, and they just get an email back confirming the reservations. I wouldn't do it um, ten minutes before you're about to go into the restaurant, just because not everyone is at their computer or at their phone every second. But certainly if you do it uh, in the morning, um, if you do it several hours beforehand. Um, you know, you can make a reservations, and what's nice is that you can you can put in a request if you want to sit, sit at a certain spot on a corner. You want to have like a birthday cake. You want to have a surprise. So it allows you to um, just you know make sure there's no um, you know question marks. You're, you're exactly what you want. How many people? What uh, what time? What day? What your requests are? And um, it's a good way just for the restaurant owner just to see it and confirm, and you can just be in touch. So there's a lot of different features we have, we, you know, that um, people can contact me, and they can download all the menus. They can search by zip code um, with a 50-mile radius. So we're always in. We're going to be adding a lot of different stuff with videos and 
more uh, social media stuff, and so there's a lot of cool stuff. And I would definitely um, download the app, Great Coast Restaurants, and um, you'll, you'll love it. As you can see, the kosher restaurant industry is constantly evolving. And with mobile technology, you can find out about your favorite restaurants with the touch of the button. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.